but I think the pajamas would have been better. And, and so we have to develop as adults that balance. All too often, as we look at these gifts, we have to categorize them and ask ourselves, what are we going to do with this gift? How can I use it best? Especially the gifts from God. God gave you family and friends, a home and a country, skills and talents. How do I use those to my best advantage and to the greatest effect in God's kingdom? Because it's not just about me. It's about using our gifts to please God as well. In the lessons today, I see a, a situation, especially with John the Baptist, where he sort of got off track. God had given him a special gift, and that was the ability to call the people and to bring them to him. He was, I guess the term today would be charismatic. He can speak and the people would come. And his main job was very simple. Bring the people to you. Tell them, prepare. There's a Savior coming. And John got a little off track. He hears that Herod, the political governor of Judea, had gone to a family reunion. His brother Philip held it in Rome. And when he came home, he brought Philip's wife and daughter with him. And it was kind of the scandal of the country, and Herod really didn't care. He was in charge, he could do what he wanted. But John was angry. And so he went all the way out in the desert. Herod's palace was about seven miles from Judea, or from Jerusalem. And he walked around the base of the wall of the palace, and in the evening when Herod and his mistress would walk around on the parapets, He'd shout up at them, you know, repent, adulterers. And let's, say, let's face it, Herod, the guy, you know, yeah, didn't really mind. But Philip's wife was offended, telling him, make him stop, lock him up, throw him in the dungeon. And so Herod did. John uses God's gift to call the people to be heard, but he forgot about proclaiming a Messiah. And instead, he does exactly what James in the lesson tells us not to do, to judge each other. And in doing this, suddenly he's locked away. And as you sit in the jail cell, you can imagine saying, boy, did I screw that one up. Darn. Should have done better. No, 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 no. Doesn't work that way. Nobody ever says, boy, that was my fault. John calls out to Jesus and says, are you sure you're the Messiah? Are you the one that I'm supposed to proclaim? Because it ain't working right. I'm in jail. Well, guess what? That's not exactly Jesus' fault. And Jesus sends back the answer that's perfect. Listen to what you, what's going on. People are being healed. People are being cared for. The poor are given a good message. Who do you think is doing that? Do you ever see somebody else heal the blind or raise the dead? Yeah, I think I'm the Messiah, all right. In our own lives, as we are given gifts, especially the gift of faith. Paul says that we are given the gift of faith through the Holy Spirit. All too often, we take that gift like a tie from Aunt Edna. Wow, purple and orange, that's cool. Put it up on the shelf in the closet and then go off and run our lives without it. In the case of faith, yes, thank you for faith in Jesus. Uh, and, I'm, and I have faith in you and faith in Jesus, but I'm still gonna do things my way. And we go out and we run our lives doing things our way. And guess what happens? 
Maybe we don't end up in a cell, but bad things can occur. This isn't quite the way I planned it. And all too often we ask ourselves, God, are you sure you got this right? <laughs> Never realizing that if you live by faith, if you trust in God to guide you, if you let God's principles be the limits of what you can and can't do, the problems you get into may not have occurred at all. Hmm. The other thing about gifts, not only do we want to use them wisely and use them effectively, is to choose a time when to use them and how to use them. Many of you here have great and wonderful gifts. And you use them in your homes, in your business, in your work, to great effect for success. And in here I see you doing the same thing. God makes you generous. I've seen that so many different ways. I look out there at the trees with things under them and on them and I say, what a generous and kind and wonderful people. And God blesses you for that. But then I look at a list and they say we need readers for this month. That's empty. I see a committee struggling to get people to run for office in the council. And they say there's gifts out there that aren't being used to affect. And for those of you that volunteered one more time to be part of the leadership of this church, I say thank you and God blessing you for the gift of volunteering for the willingness to use your spiritual gifts to help to lead this church for one more year or two. What a great thing that is. There's a story about a fellow I knew. <laughs> I'm going to call him Henry. He is a little bigger than me, probably about 50 pounds heavier. Strong son of a gun. Drove a truck. And Henry had one problem. He had a speech impediment. You had to listen really carefully to hear what he was saying. And one day, Henry found out his wife was going to have a baby. And for a guy that size, you think that he could contain the joy, but it just burst out in every direction. You had to be careful talking to him because he'd grab you by the shoulders and almost lift you off your feet, telling you, I want to have a baby. Well, congratulations, Henry. Please put me down before my arm breaks. <laughs> Henry went to his pastor on Sunday and said, I want you to pray to thank God for me for this gift. And the pastor said, Henry, today I want you to come up front to the church. And I want you to pray I want you to thank God in the words that only you can develop. In a way that only you can express the joy that you have. Wow. That was a tough one. But Henry, okay, went up in every prayer he has, started the same way. Good morning, Father. And you could tell that's what he felt. And then the joy and the thankfulness just flowed out of him in his prayer. And it was so impressive that the people in the congregation afterwards says, Henry, once in a while would you mind praying again for us? You obviously know how to talk to God. Uh -huh. He finally agreed. He says, yeah, I'll do that. And it was an incredible view of someone who had an impediment that holds him back, but also had a desire that drove him forward, the desire to say thank you to God through a simple prayer. Each of you has special gifts. Each one of you, God has given the ability to do something wonderful. And I wonder, what impediment holds you back? What keeps you from being everything you can be in this church? A leader, 
a voice reading the gospel, a man at the door saying hello. You show the God's gift in so many ways, in so many generous and wonderful ways you glorify God and care for one another. I'd ask you to think too about leading your church and to give thanks for the people today that have stepped forward and agreed to do so for another couple years. Do this, I ask you, in Jesus' name. Amen.